Okay, so this supplemental video is related to lecture two, slide seven, the calculation of the expansion work by ideal gas. Now, um, for the second lecture, we focused on the first law of thermodynamics, so which um, involving tracking the internal energy change by the work and the heat uh, down uh, or, or to the system or to the system or transferred from or to the system. Now, uh, throughout the semester, we're going to use ideal gas to illustrate quantitative calculation of the work. Uh, this is because for ideal gas, the equation of the state or the parameter defining the ideal gas follow a well-defined mathematical formula, like you know, basically ideal gas laws, uh, as we have introduced earlier. An equation of state virtually is a mathematical relationship for all, of all the parameters that um, relate to each other. So another way to think about it is, is if you have certain uh, parameter of the system that's defined, and then some of the remaining parameter will be um, dependent on the other uh, already uh, f uh, fixed parameter. So this has uh, become very convenient uh, to quantitatively calculate um, work, as we will demonstrate in this example. So uh, as shown in select number six in lecture two, we use a uh, cylinder of ideal gas to cal demonstrate, or as a model, to demonstrate the cal calculation of the work of the system. So let's say this cylinder has a cross-section uh, of area of A, and then the outside pressure, we use a P external to denote and then the gas inside the, uh, this is the ideal gas uh, that inside the piston. And then ideal gas has a pressure we can denote as internal pressure. Now, um, to calculate the work, we started with the basic physics, right? Usually work is uh, the force you apply on an object and over a certain distance. Now, in this case, if the ideal gas is doing work on the piston by pushing against the external pressure, so the force needed to uh, that to push against the piston would be the external pressure. That is because that's what the gas is trying to uh, work against. So the force really because the pressure is defined as unit force on unit area. So the actual force would be the area, the pressure times the area, right? So, so that's the total force. Now, if over after the gas expansion over a distance L of area A and then the work would be the external pressure times the area, then times the area. So that's the work. Now, here, obviously, as you can tell, the area times the distance the area would be this volume. So that's the change of the volume. So the basic calculation of gas expansion then becomes the pressure and the volume change. And remember the earlier convention we have uh, indicated if the system is doing work to the outside, so that's as, that's as if its internal energy be used to, um, to do work. So then we have uh, used a negative sign in terms of this. So that's why we put a negative in front of it. So this is actually what we showed on the um, in slide number six of lecture two. 
So now let's um, imagine a special situation where when the piston is uh, moving, the gas and the gas internal pressure always equal to the outside pressure. So this actually is um, a sort of an imaginary process because on the constant temperature, And as we see from the um, ideal gas equation of state or ideal gas law, the expansion of the ideal gas, the P internal pressure will keep changing, drop. So that means if the external pressure is kept at the constant, then the process will not occur. So let's imagine that as the internal pressure drop, the, the external pressure also drop such that for every new internal pressure and there's going to be new external pressure and then they always keep the equal so that means so how can we calculate the work in this case because we can't use this constant um, formula discussed be, uh, above because the above equal example is showing that there's a constant fixed external pressure and then that's what the gas is doing work against but here, what happened is, for every small change, the pressure also changed. So what we can do is we can kind of divide the expansion process in like many, many, many tiny, tiny steps. For every tiny step, we can imagine that there's a small amount of expansion. So we can think of, say, the first step, for example. The first step work would be the initial pressure which is equal or the, the internal and uh, external will be the same so you can use basically uh, internal as the first tiny change and the second step would be and not the the first small volume change which is virtually the first step you can also add to the second step it will be changed into another tiny uh, now it'll be a new pressure and also tiny volume change and you can basically uh, add up all of this change into the total work so the total work virtually will be the summation of this many tiny step and with so that's you can just break down the whole expansion process into multiple tiny steps. So in this uh, formula, what really means is for any step, later on step, I step, the pressure become PI. This is no longer P, P in anymore. Basically internal pressure, out, external pressure are the same. So this is called step I's pressure than the tiny volume. So uh, this actually is a typical classic example of uh, integration. As you can see, you can actually uh, change the tiny, even the delta volume is small enough, sometimes we use a dV stands for. Now, this is where you find out the equation of state or the ideal gas law become very convenient because then the pressure can be expressed as a function of V. So if we come back over here, P equals to uh, NRT over V. So in the here, you instead of, you can also can just, uh, for now we can still keep the submission volume over the Y, the PI would be VI over and R T, and we still keep the negative sign in front of it. Now, but if you summation over a lot of tiny sin, this is a virtually a integration from volume one to volume two minus N R T V over D V. So um so come back to the original figure, we can show that V1 is the starting volume 
V2 is actually the end point from the top to the bottom. So, virt and so virtually this integration can be rewritten in NRT integration V1, V2, dV over V. And here, uh, this is where why we want you to review your calculus, um, calculus uh, uh, background. So and this one can be written, written as N, NR minus NRT natural log V2 over V1. So virtually, if this is, if you think um, in, term, in terms of a graph, as you see in slide seven, what happens is you, you when the ideal gas undergo isothermal expansion, you know, expansion from V1, V2, which is, that means they, they uh, keep the same temperature. So that means PV equals NRT, the T is constant, and then they will, the pressure and the volume will follow a, um, a equation of state. And then they work virtually via integration under the curve starting from a certain volume to another volume and this is the area corresponding to the work that the system can be done and later we will learn uh, a lot more uh, application of this calculation process because this introduced another concept that we'll discuss again that is a so-called reversible process uh, in this case what we mean by reversible process is that every single tiny moment the internal pressure and external external pressure are kept the same that means every single step is reversible because only when uh, the internal pressure and out, uh, external pressure are the same the piston can move either way so that virtually what we mean by uh, reversible so um, the, this concept of reversibility will be used in over and over again, and, and we'll be talking about this later on when we discuss entropy and also free energy. So just keep that in mind. And, and we'll also deal with a different kind of situation of reversibility. For example, when we discuss um, the heat transfer between a object to another project, the process is only reversible when we actually as assuming the two objects have the same temperature so the heat can go back and forth equally reversibly so virtually um, uh, when we say a process is irreversible uh, the pressure of the system the surrounding is the same or and or the temperature of the system surrounding is the same so therefore the mechanical movement or heat transfer can go back and forth and thus we call them reversible so we'll, we'll go back to talk about this, um, some other situation. But anyway, for now, this is just to show an example of how we can use ideal gas as an example to consider expansion process um, and being able to calculate quantitatively the amount of work that the system or the ideal gas will do to the surrounding. And we will use this example uh, in several other situations later on to calculate, uh, for example, entropy change and also uh, free energy. All right, so this will be concluding this supplemental video and I will upload another video later uh, for uh, talking about the entropy concept. Uh, I just realized that, that my camera angle was uh, a little bit off, so um, the previous video, uh, I missed this um, right side of the, uh, the paper. So I'm just going to take one uh, small clip here to show that um, the on the right side or in the previous clip that you didn't see it, um, they are just here and also the integration part. Um, but you can kind of look at my uh, video presentation in um, reference to slide six and seven of lecture two. You'll probably also get a similar idea. And there's a little bit different um, notion used at, uh, in the textbook. They use uh, VI initial, VF, V final, but uh, those uh, difference are hopefully relatively straightforward so you can see them uh, uh, clearly here. 
Anyway, so um, hopefully from here on, I'll figure out how to do a better job in uh, keeping my camera angle correctly.